Welcome everyone. It is wonderful to see you all today. We kept the mic stand on the short end because I'm taller and Jen actually is doing the service today. And I decided I didn't want to hurt my back by walking around like this. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we, we've designed the whole service around the size of the mic. <laughs> Welcome everyone. I'm Pastor Melanie Emels. I'm one of the hospitality pastors here. Um, this, it's so great to see so many of you here on this day that's attempting to rain. It's not sure what it's doing, which is so typical of spring in Victoria. You never know what's going to happen in the next hour. Uh, today we are talking, as I said, Jen is doing a sermon and it's called Have a Little Faith. Uh, she has some beautiful pictures, so take a look at those when it comes up. I have a few announcements for you. Oh look, there it is again. We really want you to see this picture, apparently. So one of the first announcements is tonight at 5.30, up at Hope Farm, there will be a community worship. Uh, this will start happening on the last Sunday of every month. And I've been told to tell you that if you're coming up to park, you have to go around the barn and park around the barn. Around and park by the barn. Around and park by the barn. Apparently, you'll know what, you, what that means when you get up there. So look for a barn. There's a big barn. There's a couple of barns, but there's one big one. So take, if you have some time to go up, go and take a look at Hope Farm and see what's happening up there. It's beautiful right now. Street Seeders. We have a game coming up on May 30th at 6.15 at Brayford Park. Uh, and this is versus Holly Dean Church. How did we do this week, Chris? Uh, we didn't win in certain ways. We didn't win in certain ways. Okay, uh, I'm not totally sure what that means, but I'm assuming it means that our score was a little on the low side? Yeah, we had so much fun though. It was, it, it was yeah, fun. Was but we won in the fun category. You like this. Uh, Souls for Souls Challenge. You can register for this through the Mustard Seed website. Uh, we are already at 9% of our goal, even though it doesn't officially start till next month. This is a challenge to walk, run, or hike 200 kilometers and get people to sponsor you, to raise funds to provide kids with shoes for the coming school year. You can either take part by walking, running, or hiking, or sponsoring someone else, or just making a contribution. <laughs> there has been a suggestion by certain pastors that perhaps the pastors need to have a pastor team. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's part of the <laughs> it's part of the Fair Start program, which puts together packages including school supplies, a gift card, and of course shoes. One of these packages costs approximately two hundred dollars, and we give out something like three hundred every year. Where's mine? I'm walking everywhere. <laughs> You can get more information on the Mustard Seed website, so you can take a look at that. So thank you everyone for coming, thank you for being here. Let's, let's do our call to worship and get into our beautiful service. Psalm number 66 goes like this in the beginning. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name, make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. With that in mind, if you're able to, why not stand? Or even if you're sitting, come and join in. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. Go on up to the mountain of mercy, to the crimson perpetual tide. Kneel down on the shore, be thirsty no more. Go under and be purified. Follow Christ to the holy mountain. Sinner sorry, wrecked by the fall. Went your heart and your soul with the fountain that flows for you and for me and for all.
sky went black. Go on up to the mountain of mercy, to the crimson perpetual tide. Kneel down on the shore, be thirsty no more. Go under and be purified. Follow Christ in the holy mountain. Sinner, sorry and wrecked by the fall. Plant your heart and your soul in the fountain that flows for you and for me and for all. At the wonderful, tragic, mysterious tree on that beautiful, scandalous night, you and me were atoned by his blood and forever washed white on that beautiful, scandalous night. On that beautiful, scandalous night. Miraculous night. Okay, great to see everyone. Let's pray together. God, your, your beauty is everywhere your presence in all of creation. You come to us, Lord, quietly and profoundly, and you whisper to us. You call for us to be still. Your ways are different, your thoughts, your ways higher than ours. And we're invited into your love, Lord. Love for you and love for one another. When we arrive, when we rest, when we're still there, Abiding in your love, there is peace. The experience of something sacred, something original, relationship. <clears throat> Spirit of God, help us, help us to see well. You help us to see well and to see you well and to see one another well. Your ways are different. This world presents all kinds of distractions and calling for our attention and teasing us into all kinds of emotions and still you seep up and through them to meet with us, inviting us to return to you, to find rest for our souls and to abide in you. Good Father, Creator, you seep up to meet with us through our sorrow, in our joy, even you break through our fears and we're met by your love. There's always hope. And your invitations, it's, it's not only to, to come to you, Lord, it's, it's to abide in you. Redeem our connection with you, Lord. Spark an interest within us to come home to you and where division is felt between us, seep up and through this division to spark an interest to come home to you. And here, we will see one another with your eyes and your heart. And your peace will restore us. Abiding in you, our hearts, together with yours, can break for what we see, the sorrow and the pain for the world uh, that, that chooses exile, because we know that there's a better way in you, Jesus. And we, in a moment, we can return to lightness, remembering you, Lord. We were recollected by your everlasting faithfulness. We remember that there is hope, and love always hopes. And it is this love, your love within us, home, that streams inward and outward with surprising hope. So we don't need to fight, to push, to keep, to strive, even to do good or to be compassionate. Simply, the call is to abide and your love will be made known by being amongst us in our love for one another in these streams of surprising, loving hope out into the darkness, dark places. This will be the message interlacing our words and actions embedded deeply in our community. You are our cohesion. 
and the orchestrator of our harmony. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Thank you, Jesus. You are the one who is love. We have first, forever, and only ever known the love of eternity through you. And as by your love we are invited home, and the expression of your superabundant love becomes real for us as it occurs between us. Let's keep practicing this, and may we come to you, Lord Jesus, as we have been invited in to come, finally to find rest and home for our souls. Now, let us lift up our hearts in prayer, and as you feel the movement of God's Spirit, please lift up your voice. Now is the time for us to be together in prayer and caring for one another for what's closest to our hearts.
sometimes it's hard when we don't see him right before the door. So I just pray that you put your hand on him.
today is from Matthew 13, 31, and 32. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. <laughs> Incidentally, the first sermon I ever preached was on the parable of the mustard seed. And now here I am, working on the mustard seed. So God does indeed work in mysterious ways. So let us pray. God, be with us today as we discuss your word through the parables of Jesus. Help us to uncover what it is you wish us to understand, to bring us closer to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 When researching for this sermon, I stumbled upon some fascinating facts about the mustard seed. First of all, it is one of the smallest seeds found in the Middle East, and despite its size, it can reach about 10 to 15 feet high, although it is thought of as more of a shrub than a tree. Interestingly, Canada is one of the largest producers of the mustard seed. At least 50% is grown here. And in Regina, Saskatchewan, a festival takes place here every year honoring the seed for its spice and medicinal purposes. The mustard seed has also been used as a sacred symbol for faith and charity since ancient times. So this very humble seed has held spiritual significance for a great many people over a great many years. Now I've actually brought some mustard seeds here to pass around. So please notice how small they are. And if you want to take one for yourself to keep as a reminder, or to plant in your garden, please go right ahead. So I'll just pass them out. And just pass them around. You can see that they are indeed very small. Now Jesus mentions the mustard seed at least four times in the Bible. Its prominence would have been known to his audience, not least of all, as most of them would have been heavily involved in agriculture. One of my favorite writers of religion is Karen Armstrong. She has an interesting story as she grew up in England as a member of an Irish Catholic family. She joined a convent at age 17 and planned to spend her life as a nun. But somehow, no matter how hard she tried, she felt distant from God. Her increasing inability to feel God led her to leave the convent to become an academic and English professor. As life would have it, she began writing about, a relig writing about religion, a topic she knew well, and was soon asked to take part in a BBC production about the life of the Apostle Paul. While filming in Jerusalem, she had an intense spiritual experience, which brought her back to her faith in God. What a roundabout way for God to get her attention and for her to find her calling. This made Karen Armstrong spend a lot of time thinking about faith and the lack thereof. She says that an increasing number of people, especially in this part of the world, find traditional religious doctrines and practices irrelevant and instead turn to art, music, literature, dance, sport, or drugs to give them the transcendent experience that humans seem to require. We all look for moments of ecstasy and rapture in which we inhabit our humanity more fully than usual and are lifted momentarily beyond ourselves. We humans are meaning-seeking creatures and fall easily into despair if we cannot find significance or value in our lives. We only have to look around us to see that Karen Armstrong is making a valid point. Human beings must find meaning and purpose in our lives. Without faith, we flounder. 
We must believe in something bigger than ourselves. In this parable of the mustard seed, Jesus shows us the way. Jesus teaches us that the kingdom of heaven may start small, but it has the potential to grow and expand immensely, providing refuge and sustenance to many, much like the mustard seed that grows into a stall, strong tree and becomes a resting place for the birds. Now many of you here know the story of our own Mustard Seed Street Church better than I do. Some of you have even been here since its humble beginnings. But for those of you who don't, I thought I would share this little bit of a background history written by Norman K. Archer, a well-known pastor in this city. He says, when Gip Forrester moved from Vancouver to Victoria in the early 1970s, he bought and operated a second-hand store on Government Street. He began to attend Emanuel Baptist Church, where Norman was the senior pastor at the time. Gip always had a somewhat rebellious attitude towards Christianity. One day he came to Norman and said, You are doing all these things in the church for your people. When are you going to do something for my people? Norman's answer was simple. He asked Gip, when are you? Tell me what you need and what steps the Lord wants you to take to implement them, and you can count on me to support you all the way. Gibb said, I want to see a street church, started by street people, for street people, with street people as its members and administrators. He said, though, that he couldn't do it alone. He said he would need support from churches who are ready to help. Norman urged Skip to plan big, but start small. This is probably excellent advice when starting any ministry. It was the same advice that Jesus gave to his followers. Norman said to Gip, don't bite off more than you can chew. Take small steps, but always have your eyes set on a larger vision. Norman and Gip prayed about it. Norman was preaching a series of sermons at that time on the parables of Jesus much like we have been doing. One Sunday morning, Norman preached on the mustard seed. The next morning, Gip came into his office, bubbling with excitement. He said, I've got it. At the back of my store on Government Street, I have a tiny storeroom. That little room is going to be the mustard seed, starting very small, but it will grow. And Gip's back room really was tiny. You could only squeeze about 10 people into it. Gip was given a prayer stool. Right in front of you. Oh, there it is. This prayer stool. Still a very valued treasure here, and a memory of our church's early days. When people from the streets dropped into Gip's store, he would share his faith with them and pray with them, and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. The church began to grow until it was too big for the little storeroom. So an old warehouse was purchased on Pandora, and it became a place of ministry. In time, the church moved to this location on 625 Queens Avenue, where new ministries have developed, such as our meals served to the community, the food bank, View Field, and Hope Farm, which will soon become a healing center again. All of this came from a very small idea that Gip Forrester presented to Norman K. Archer at Emmanuel Baptist Church one day. So what does it take to have a little faith? What could any of us do with just a small idea, a tiny bit of hope, a minuscule amount of belief? What if we tried it out and refused to let it go? What if we just take one small step in the right direction and never turn back? Now many of you know that I have been attending the Vancouver School of Theology, well, for many years now. I think it will be at least seven by the time I've completed my Master's of Divinity degree. It is okay. I only have two courses left, so I can do this. One would assume that in order to have found myself in this subject of study, I would be a person of consistently great faith. And through this process, my faith would continue to do nothing but expand and grow. And well, I wish this was true. But in fact, sometimes having to study and analyze and continuously write essays and take exams has left me with more questions than answers. 
At times I have even struggled with my faith, wrestled with my faith. And at times I am sorry to say, though perhaps Jesus would understand, I have been left with just a little faith, maybe even the size of a mustard seed. Prior to this, I was always someone of a rather quiet, understated, and deeply personal faith. I preferred to live my beliefs rather than to talk about them. And in fact, this is still very much my nature. If truth be known, I would choose to be sort of sitting in the back of the church somewhere, just listening and minding my own business. But somehow, here I am. <laughs> what got me to this place was what Karen Armstrong would have described as one of those moments of transcendence, where God powerfully shows up in your life and you are transformed. These type of moments you never forget, and I am grateful for that, because for one thing, it is amazing, and for another, these moments don't necessarily happen every day. Instead, you have to remember them and hold on to them, making sure your seeds of faith don't slip away. I equate this experience as a bit similar to falling in love. When you are helplessly falling in love with someone, it can feel overwhelming, like fireworks and rainbows. But as the years go on, there are happy, sunshiny days, but it can get cloudy, with floors to be swept and laundry to be done and kids to feed. But if you hold on to the memories of the fireworks and keep on working at it, the love might just last and the vision might not be forgotten. And this is what I've had to do at times with my faith, I have had to work at it. I have had to hold on tightly to that little seed and not let it go. And as the years have gone on, my faith might just be starting to sprout a few branches, and I hope that those branches might just be strong enough for some birds to rest upon. <laughs> we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus took 12 insignificant, often fearful, doubting men in a small, out-of-the-way place in the Roman Empire and build a church that managed to infiltrate the whole world where many have found rest in its shade. One of the other things that strikes me about this parable is how different this message is to what we often hear about in our mainstream culture. Small and understated is rarely rewarded in our culture or even desired. It is not the way to make things happen. Being smart, strong, rich, and powerful is what gets results, or so we are told. But God's kingdom works differently. God's kingdom seems to run by distinctive and unique set of laws. This parable of the mustard seed challenges us to look at our world through a different lens. The parables of Jesus purposely talk about these ordinary parts of life, planting seeds, watering, weeding, every one of Jesus' audiences would have participated in these activities. And all of gardening is hard work. It takes commitment, attention, a kind of deep and holy effort. And this is Jesus' point. Maintain your daily diligence and trust in the mystery of growth, and all any of us can do is wait and water and be astonished when it happens. In these parables that we've been looking over for the past several weeks, I've noticed something else. The kingdom of heaven not only sm starts small and yields big results, but it is also often concealed. The treasure hidden in the backyard, the pearl discovered amongst the common, the net hidden in the depths of the sea, the good wheat hidden amongst the tares. The striking thing about a lot of these images is their essential hiddenness. If the kingdom of heaven is like these, then it is not something readily apparent to the eye, but something that must be searched for, something just below the surface of things, waiting there to be discovered and claimed. This shows to me that not only can God do a lot with a little, but also that God is willing to go to great lengths if necessary, to uncover in us and around us what is needed in order for the kingdom to be revealed. 
The kingdom of heaven also does not grow in nice, tidy rows. Anyone who looks up the mustard seed plant on an agricultural website will find words of caution because it can be quite difficult to manage this wild and invasive plant. There is an uncontrollable and untamable quality to the mustard seed and to the kingdom of heaven. It is full of power and potential, and it is not always predictable. It does not always grow where one might expect. To catch a glimpse of the kingdom can both be unnerving and invigorating. To accept the invitation might even be a little scary. Where could it lead? The church often uses the term seekers or searchers for those who are still discovering their spiritual path. But I believe that all of us continue to seek and search. We don't discover God's truth as a one-time thing, but instead come to faith again and again. It doesn't really matter how far we have come on our journey, as long as we keep our eyes open and are willing to reveal the hidden within the ordinary, which is where Christ can usually be found. I know many of us have been wondering what God is up to right now, in this time, as we see so many people struggling with poverty, with homelessness, with addiction, with mental health issues. Where is God in the places where wars are going on and innocent people are being killed? Where is God as the forests burn down and people suffer from heat stroke and other climate disasters? Where is the kingdom of heaven in all of this? It truly does seem hidden beneath our sight. Well, like 2,000 years ago, perhaps the kingdom of heaven resides in the ordinary, understated, but profound acts of kindness, hope, and faith shown by people just like us. And it was what Gip Forster first envisioned when he created the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like those who are going through their own personal pain and grief, but still show up to cook meals every week for the folks in our community. The kingdom of heaven is like those who have spent years struggling with addiction, but are now one month sober and taking it one day at a time. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who goes to prison and comes out 10 years later, determined to start over as a person others can trust. The kingdom of heaven is like a person who has nothing, giving his last sandwich to someone else. The kingdom of heaven is like those families who have little, donating food and clothing to those who have even less. The king kingdom of heaven is like a grandmother who never stops praying for and watching over her granddaughter who lives on the streets. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who has lost his own son, running out to save someone else's with a dose of naloxone. The kingdom of heaven is like people gathered on a Sunday afternoon to worship God and hang on to hope. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. The kingdom of heaven starts small. The kingdom of heaven starts here. The kingdom of heaven starts now. Amen. Amen.
Enjoy some great food. 